And but you're also in the middle of the crazy AI money of 2021 and 2022. Yeah. And the ZERP, you know, 0% interest rates when mm -hmm. there was nowhere to put money. And coming back from my background in raising funds, I've known two types of entrepreneurs. Those who want money to to actually build a company, and then those who raise, burn, raise more with huge valuations. And I was curious, like when you raised 4.7 million in January, 2022, was there that, um, how did you approach it? And was there that temptation in those early hot markets to almost start adding zeros to your valuation just because you can't? Um, I don't think through the first three years of the company, we ever had more than uh, like 12 months of runway. Like we actually, so, you know, we announced we raised that much. We actually, before this most recent round, we raised, we had raised $10 million over three and a half years, but we basically raised it a million dollars at a time, like every six months or something. Um, nice. We were a pretty high burn startup. I remember, you know, I started with mm -hmm. five of my best engineers from my last company. And so I remember going through YC and like, we had a way higher, we had like a 158 burn, everyone else is burning like 15 K. I was like, what are you doing? It's like, well. I optimize for speed, not like we know there's a window we need to hit. So we're not optimized for dilution. We're optimized for speed to market. And when we started the company, I raised half a million dollars from friends and family. Got into YC, raised a million dollars. Demo day, raised 1.5. Six months later, raised another 1.5. 1, 1. Um, and part of maybe that confidence came from, you know, those first three, four rounds were in that era where it was objectively much easier to raise money at for seed stage kind of moonshots, right? Um, in frankly, in 2022, we actually had planned to go raise our Series A just on usage growth alone without even monetizing yet. And quickly the market changed and we we're like, okay, well, that's off the table, right? We've now got to go get revenue. And so, um, so you know, it, it did become challenging in the last two years while we kind of kind of got stuck a little bit in no man's land for a while between, you know, one era and the other, right? Because the goalposts move, but uh, I only work well under pressure. Um, and so I'm always trying to construct things that force me to like survive or die sort of thing. And I always said like, well, if we can't make it work in the next 12 months, so let's shut it down and go on the next thing. Right. Like, um, so yeah, it, it, very unique environment, right? Like in, in looking back on it now, I realize how crazy it was. And I think if I'd realized how crazy it was at the time, I probably would have added more zeros, but just to focus on building the business. I, I find fundraising to be this like distraction and it's just like a means to an end. Like, raise a little bit of money so I can get back to work. Um, and, and, you know, and that's partially why we did we never really did true fundraisers. We just did kind of party rounds. We probably had a hundred people on the cap table where we just mainly raised from angels and, uh, small institutions so that we could just raise small checks and just keep moving and not spend a month of my time heads down on fundraising. No, it makes so much sense. Oh my, I mean, it, it is so raising funds can literally become your full-time job. I've seen so many businesses actually lose it because the leadership is so focused on the next round and yep. not the business. <laughs> right.